Hello everybody. And if you're thinking about self-publishing and don't know where to start, come and join the Spa Girls each week for 30 minutes of top tips and resources. And yes, it's Cheryl here doing the introduction, so <laughs> that's just the way it is. And I have the lovely Shah with me. And unfortunately, Wendy is um, sick and Trudy has got something else on. But before I introduce our lovely guests, I just wanted to let you know that we are having some technical issues. And um, please bear with us. And if it gets too bad, then um, we, we will, might try and do another recording later on. Okay, so here we are with the wonderful Carlin Robinson from uh, Book Bump. As you know, we've had it before. Yay! <laughs> Welcome, Carlin. Thanks for joining us. Of course. Thank you. It's exciting to be back. Right. So um, I'm sure that most of our listeners have uh, listened to you before, Carlin, talking about everything book bump um, offers us but uh, just I'll just do a little rundown for the people that haven't um, uh, been lucky enough so Carla works in product market marketing on book bump's partners team where she ensures all authors and publishers know how to use book bump's tools to achieve their marketing goals she writes content for the partners blog and website she speaks at conferences and conducts market research but today we are actually talking about chirp and um, uh, Chirp is owned and operated by the same people who started BookBub, a book discovery service used by millions of readers across the world. Although Chirp was launched more recently, BookBub and its parent company, PubMark Inc., have been around since 2012 and are located in Massachusetts. So, um, you know, as enthusiastic as we are about everything in BookBub, uh, today we're talking about Chirp and audiobooks, as I said, and we can't wait. So, calm. Let's start off, what have you got to tell us about Chirp? Yeah, so Chirp is uh, a very exciting new area for BookBub uh, to be getting into. So Chirp is actually an audiobook retailer. So we are selling audiobooks directly to, uh, to readers who sign up and there's no subscription for them. Um, it's completely a la carte. So you can come in to sign up for free to Chirp, just create an account. And then you can purchase any individual title for whatever price it's listed. And then those books are added to a reader's library where they can listen through the Chirp website. Um, or we have a listening app as well. So you can listen to those audiobooks on your phone, download them, um, listen. Used to be uh, during commutes and on the go. Now mostly listening from home here in the U.S. at least. Uh, so it's a very new space for us, not only because it's audiobooks, but also because we're selling those books directly to readers as opposed to linking them to other retailers like we do on the BookBub side. Mm -hmm. uh, but we do have a daily email that we send out to our trip members that's very similar to the BookBub feature deals email. So we feature a handful of discounted, limited time discounted audiobooks in each genre. And uh, similar to the BookBub side, trip members will let us know which genres they like to listen to and uh, they'll get the deals in those categories. But biggest difference, of course, is that they then buy them directly from Chirp. Cool, that's great. So one imagines that you have to have a completely separate account to, to get the Chirp books? Yes, um, so as a reader, it's just free to sign up uh, with your email to get that Chirp account and then right. start getting those um, emails coming in with the deals. Right, it sounds easy enough. <laughs> and um, what I think would concern most of our uh, listeners is um, for the best chance of getting a good promotion, what are the key things an audiobook is going to need? Um, we have talked about audiobooks before, but I think just knowing um, what uh, the processes are for, for your platform would really help. Yeah, absolutely. So the first step is that your audiobook does have to be available for sale on Chirp in order to be eligible to include, be included at that email. So we are partnered with Findaway Voices, um, the lovely team over there, and they are the distributor for Chirp. So if you have audiobooks, um, either that you've produced through Findaway Voices audio uh, production tools, or you just use them to distribute your, your audio titles, you can add Chirp as one of your retailers. Um, they make it very easy to distribute out to a number of audiobook retailers and libraries, and Chirp is one of them now. So if you are set up through Findaway Voices, you can list your book on Chirp. And then it's a very simple submission form just through your BookBub dashboard. So as an author, you don't need to create a separate account as a partner with Chirp. We make it easy for you to do everything from one place. So uh, authors should see a new section in their BookBub partner dashboard for Chirp audiobook deals. 
and that's where you'll find that submission form. Brilliant. And I guess the same rules apply when you're um, putting an audiobook through Chirp as, as any other audiobook is that, and in fact an ebook or a print book, is that you've got to have that cover and that blurb um, doing the selling for you, doing, you know, getting that marketing in line already. Yes, exactly. So um, we do, of course, send out that email, but uh, Chirp members can also come to the website and search for books and browse. So the same as any other retailer or platform, mm -hmm. you want to have a cover that's really going to look professional and appealing mm -hmm. to readers in your genre and a description that grabs their attention. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and um, talking about descriptions, um, BookBub really seems to lend itself to that. I think we've all seen um, how, how it looks when we see an ad for BookBub. Is that the same thing for Chirp? Do you take that into account and tweak um, blurbs or do, are you just adding whatever um, an author sends you? Yeah, so we are writing blurbs for the Chirp mm -hmm. email as well. Um, one thing that's fun is that the the brand and the voice on Chirp is a little bit more fun than on BookBub right now. So okay. you'll often see we try to work some puns into the blurbs, um, which our editorial team is having a lot of fun with. But it's a very similar process in terms of the selection. Um, mm -hmm. Same team of editors behind BookBub, though of course they're now catering to the taste of our Chirp members as opposed to the BookBub members. So reviewing all of the submissions that come in and um, using both what they know about our members on Chirp and what they've purchased in the past, what they like. Um, there are some cases where tastes are quite different from what we see people looking for in their eBooks on BookBub. Um, right. So the editorial team's looking at uh, mm -hmm. the using the book description and any reviews to get a sense mm -hmm. for, is this the type of content that we think those readers will really appreciate? Um, of course, the cover and then the narrator and the audiobook quality are really important as well on the Chirp side. Mm -hmm. All right, well, let's delve onto that a little bit more. I saw um, Shah's ears perk up then when you were talking about um, uh, some people are looking for something different on, on Chirp as far as books are concerned. Do you have a, a genre that's uh, showing it it's, it's suited better there or doing better? So we do have actually very different categories on mm -hmm. Chirp right now. So there are only... Um, I think nine or 10 different categories on Chirp. So much more limited than what we have on BookBub where we have, I think over 40 different um, categories and subgenres broken right. down. Mm -hmm. So, um, and we also, I mean, we have far fewer people signed up to Chirp right now. It's about 1 million members on Chirp compared to uh, over 20 million on BookBub now. So mm -hmm. um, a lot smaller, still growing really fast though and a lot of room to grow, which is exciting. Is. Um, so we've got sort of the standard categories you would expect on Chirp, but uh, unlike BookBub where we have, um, gosh, I think over 10 different romance categories maybe, we've just got the one romance category on right. Chirp right now. Um, we've got science fiction and fantasy together in one genre. Uh, I believe we just launched history as our newest Chirp category. Um, we've got kids and young adults together still in one, as opposed to we've split that out a bit more on BookBub. Um, the one genre that is different on, or dramatically different on Chirp than on BookBub is we have a classics category on Chirp that has been really popular. Yeah. And um, can you say which is the most popular? I'm, I'm picking it's probably romance. Um, I think it's, I mean, it's tricky to say most popular because of course mm -hmm. the readers who are signed up to any category are going to be really excited to see those deals. Mm -hmm. um, the equivalent of our bestseller category on BookBub is an editor's pick uh, category on Chirp. And so okay. that one does have the most subscribers. Mm -hmm. uh, and those are books that the editors, when they're reviewing the submissions, pick ones that they think are going to have really broad appeal sort of across the board to our Chirp mm -hmm. members. Great, all right. Um, so, could we maybe talk about price? Do you think there is a best price point for an audiobook? Yeah, so because audiobooks um, tend to sell at a much higher price than ebooks, sort of the base mm -hmm. price, we are seeing that higher prices are working uh, on Chirp as opposed to BookBub. So, um, BookBub deals, of course, we offer free 99 cents, 199, 299, mm -hmm. very rarely go above that. On Chirp, the deals are ranging from 99 cents up to uh, I think 6.99. It's kind of the upper end of that. Mm -hmm. So we're not featuring um, free deals right now, although that may change right. in the future. 
Okay. Uh, and one thing actually that's very different about the CHIRP submission process than the uh, BookBub feature deal is that rather than picking a single deal price, we actually let you choose a few options. So you can say, I'd be open to a deal at um, 99 cents, 199, 299, and 399. And then our editorial team, when reviewing that submission, if we want to feature the book, would let you know which price we actually think will be best for your particular book for the particular category that it's in. So we oh. do try to take out some of the guesswork for you. We know that can be a tricky part yeah. of the, the feature deal submission process. I think um, that's awesome. It's, it's really oh, great. great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, unsurprisingly, we do see that the lower the price, of course, the more clicks, the more sales mm. you're going to see. So $199, $299 is going to make a submission, um, including those as options, will make your submission a little bit more competitive than the $499, $599 end of the spectrum. And you're typically going to see a higher volume of sales at the lower prices. But mm -hmm. um, again, because the starting prices for audiobooks are higher, we are seeing some great results in the $199, $299 range. Great. And um, so when we're talking um, an author putting a book into Chirp, uh, do you have any advice for whether, you know, like if they've just started out, they've just got one, is it worthwhile them doing the promo through Chirp or should they have a couple of books so that the reader has got somewhere else to go and listen, got somewhere else to go to after that first book? Yeah, that's a really good question. Mm. Um, we are seeing a lot of follow-on sales. So if someone features uh, the first book in the series, is a really common strategy that readers who listen to that book, listeners who listen to that book, will go on <laughs> to purchase the later books in the series as well. So we're actually trying to do a lot on the Chirp website to encourage that too. Mm -hmm. So if you have, um, I think we're sending emails if readers have finished listening to book one, we'll send them an email letting them know that book two is available for sale mm -hmm. on Chirp. Uh, there's a couple places on the Chirp website, or if you're in the shopping cart, we'll, we'll prompt listeners and Chirp members to purchase later books in the series if they have the first book um, that they've clicked on or have it in their shopping cart. So in general, I would say that the, the strategy of a limited time discount works best when you have other books that readers can go on and purchase at higher prices. Yes. Um, but we do actually have ratings and reviews on Chirp as well. So if you do have just one title, you could try a lower price just to really get your book out there to um, a new audience of listeners and hopefully build up some reviews uh, or drive newsletter signups. There's some other reasons why you could still get some really great value if you just have one title on Chirp. Um, mm -hmm. But we are seeing some great results, yeah, with those, with those follow-on sales and trying to do what we can to help encourage that for our church members to get them all the way through a series. That's great. That's great. So it's not too dissimilar to how we would use BookBub. Um, mm -hmm. And, and I, I think that's a really, really good point, isn't it? That if you've only got one of either a book or, or a um, audio book is that you can use it, you use a lower price for other things. And that's, I think a very important thing to remember, you know, for people that are only just starting out. Mm -hmm. Um, I, we've been talking about um, point of view lately, and I just wonder if that matters in a um, in an audio book. Do do people prefer um, first person or you know um, third person? What is it? Is it relevant at all? Mm -hmm. Uh, I will say not that we have seen so right. far. We are, um, we still have a lot to learn about our Chirp members. It's only mm -hmm. been around, gosh, I think a year now. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so there's still a lot to learn about their tastes. And as it grows and we get more members and we split out more categories, we'll probably learn more things about those particular groups of, of listeners. Um, but yeah, we don't have enough information yet to make any clear statements on that. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's great. And I would just interject there that um, uh, Carlin uh, runs a blog also, don't you, on the partners website, and that is full of information. So please go and check that out. I'll, I'll um, definitely have a link there for you at the end of this. So um, how long is it ideal to do your promos? You know, um, I think it's... it's um, a timing thing sometimes isn't like you can't you can't put one up each month can you the same book that wouldn't be ideal would it so do you have a ideal time frame 
Yeah, I think we are using similar limitations um, as we are on BookBub. So mm -hmm. you can submit each book once every 30 days and okay. uh, we won't be featuring the same authors too frequently. I don't know if we have a set limit for how frequently mm -hmm. we can feature the same book on Chirp right. yet. Um, we might still sort of be learning to see and because we're growing our member base um, relatively quickly, we might be able to feature books more frequently than we do on BookBub where we're trying to really uh, give our readers a lot of sort of fresh books yes. um, in there. Mm. So it yeah, makes we sense do actually, both. I should note, we have a slightly different um, submission window on Chirp than we do on BookBub. So the submission uh, window is actually two months in advance instead of just the one month um, oh, okay. that you have on BookBub. Yeah. So on the first mm -hmm. of each month, we open up a new month of calendar spots. That's, that's really good to know, actually. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, and um, we noted that uh, currently Chirp's only in the USA and Canada. Are you planning to open that up anytime soon? We certainly hope we can expand to more regions soon. Um, I know we've had already a lot of authors and publishers and uh, readers asking about it in other regions. So mm -hmm. um, hopefully someday, yes, we do want to expand <laughs> it beyond that. You've got to start somewhere. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay, have you got any other questions for us, Shaf? Um, I'm sorry, I'm really behind here, so I apologise for being so quiet. It's, I guess, um, Carlin, in terms of just the people that are listening, the audience for audiobooks, would you describe, how would you describe the differences between the audiobook listeners and e-book e listeners? Um, is there a difference, particularly around sort of the romance and maybe the, the mass market fiction? Mm -hmm. So we don't have a lot of demographic data on our CHIRP members just yet to, to dig into mm -hmm. that. Um, right now, actually, there is a fair amount of overlap between the BookBub audience and the CHIRP audience because we invited members uh, of BookBub over to join CHIRP if they listen to audiobooks yeah. in addition to ebooks. So um, right now, the audience for CHIRP probably looks fairly similar. So uh, majority women and um, usually over 45 is the audience that we have over mm -hmm. on BookBub. So uh, yeah. we expect that the longer Chirp is around, the more that that will diverge and the more that that will look like a different audience than on BookBub. Um, because the general audiobook trends in the larger audiobook marketplace have a bit of a different uh, demographic than you find on the ebook side. Yeah, it's definitely a growing market, isn't it? Um, audiobook, just in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, I'm, we're very excited to be uh, finally offering audiobooks. We know for, for years, actually, BookBub members were asking, can you do deals on audiobooks? And of course, we know authors have been looking for ways to promote their audiobooks for a long time. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's one of the hardest things for authors is actually how to promote audiobooks. It's just, there just isn't that, um, that scope, you know, of, of advertising opportunities so it's, it's awesome yeah. um but oh, can i, I just put in that put in a plug for those outside the us and canada just please 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 yes. make it <laughs> i will pass that back on absolutely <laughs> we don't like this thing out carla no. <laughs> we're so far away we miss out on a lot <laughs> yeah so we actually do have one other um audiobook promotional tool that I should mention, which is that we added uh, chirp targeting to the BookBub ads platform as well. So that's oh, another fantastic. option that's available to everyone, regardless of whether they've been selected for a chirp deal. So um, it's right in the same BookBub ads uh, setup form. You can now select uh, whether you want to be promoting to ebook readers or audiobook mm -hmm. listeners. And if you include a chirp URL for your click through link, that's what makes the ad eligible to appear in the chirp emails. So anyone with a book on Chirp can run ad campaigns for it, um, as well as doing the, the email deals. And it's very similar to BookBub, where there's a spot for an ad at the bottom of those daily Chirp emails. Okay. Fantastic. That's awesome. That, that really does open it up for everybody. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And can I just ask, with, the, um, with loading to, to your platform, um, through Find Away Voices, or can it be done through other um, platforms has to be through find away voices right, right now so yeah okay. they're the only yeah. distributor yeah. for chirp yes yeah. i thought that's and the team said. over there is fantastic so if you have any questions about uh either producing audiobooks through them or if you have audiobooks elsewhere and want to learn more about them as a distributor they would love to hear from you 
cool. And we'll make sure that they're in the link in the show notes as well. Yes. We have done um, podcast episodes with our friends at Find A Way, but, um, and certainly Wendy um, uses them as her, well, again, being outside of the US, it just gives it, opens up the audiobook market for um, authors outside, particularly that can access the ACX. Yeah. So, we appreciate that global viewpoint of yourselves, Carla. <laughs> <laughs> Can't talk highly enough about it. <laughs> no, exactly. Um, now, what else? Have you got anything else for us, Carla? Um, that you'd like to talk about? I guess other important things about CHIRP. Uh, so yeah, so the submission process, you get to select the multiple deal prices was important. Um, mm. We actually arrange the discount on Sharp is the other important thing to note. So mm. you don't have to worry about contacting Findaway. We'll do that automatically to drop your price if you're selected for a deal. Uh, and there's no cost right now is the other important thing about Sharp. So because we're retailing the books directly, we don't have any um, fee like we do for featured deals. And we might introduce that in the future um, for featured spots in the emails and on the website, there might be a fee, but for now, no cost to run a deal through Chirp. So it really is a good time to get into it, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very much so. So I think you mentioned before in terms of your, audi uh, your audience, your, your recipients, shall we say, your subscribers for Chirp, uh, currently it was around that sort of 1 million mark across the different. Um, I'm assuming you're still growing that um, Carlin, without giving away company secrets. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So we have um, a team at BookBub who's devoted to growing and maintaining our audience on BookBub and on Chirp. So they're focused yeah. on um, introducing us to new readers and new listeners and then making sure that our um, email database also stays up to date and that we're not keeping anyone signed up who's no longer interested in hearing from us. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's great. And there is a Chirp app. Is that how, um, so is that how, um, listeners receive their books how do how do from a listener perspective i wonder if you could just talk us through how they go about downloading yeah absolutely <laughs> so yes there's a chirp listening app for um ios apple devices and uh, android so you can download it through the app store just look for chirp books uh, and any book that you purchase on the chirp website will show up in your library on the app and then you can download to listen to it on the go um, we've been working really hard on that app and we've got a lot of exciting features in there. I think um, some of the newest things we've added are a sleep timer. So a lot of people listen to audiobooks as they're going to sleep and um, we've made it sort of easier for it to sort of slowly turn off as that happens. Um, so yeah, so the app uh, we're really excited about. It's again, like a very new space for us. So it's been a lot of fun for our team to, to work on. Um, yeah, so as a reader, it's, uh, you can't purchase the books in the app sort of standard for um, mm -hmm. a lot of app stores. So you do purchase them through the Chirp website, but once you've logged in to the site and to the app, you'll be able to see your library pop up there. Very cool. I like that idea about turning off as you get asleep instead of having a you know, 12 hour <laughs> ebook running through the night. <laughs> ebook. So Audio book. Book. I should have again in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's really you cool. Haven't missed anything. <laughs> no. And just a little by the by, um, you mentioned that for the blurbs that you're using for audiobooks, that there was, um, you're using a few more puns. That's interesting. I, f I just found that really interesting. Yeah, that was just, um, I mean, so we run a ton of tests on the blurbs that we use mm. and uh, just decided for Chirp to try something a little bit different. And that's something that we've been having fun with uh, we're, we actually, I mean, we hope that our readers are noticing so far, we haven't had anyone like email us explicitly to, to compliment us on the fine puns we've been writing. <laughs> <laughs> because audio For those that are paying attention, you might see some funny things in some of the blurbs, yes. <laughs> I like funny things, it's good. It gets, gets my attention, but I, I think um, the, the demographic for audio books must be so massive, you know, it's, um, you know, like, Older people have been listening to audiobooks for a long, long time, and um, mm -hmm. people with disabilities and things like that. So, yeah, I, I, I can see it appealing to so many, and I quite like the idea of it as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Exercising while listening to a book is, is a great way to get that done. <laughs> yeah. 
It's been interesting over the last few months. Um, we did see a dip in uh, mid-March, which for in the U.S. was when a lot of people um, started staying home and states mm -hmm. started issuing stay-at-home orders. So um, it seems like when people were no longer commuting, their listening habits mm -hmm. kind of dropped off. But we've okay. seen that climb back up to, yeah. um, to the same levels it was before. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's been very interesting to keep an eye on that and how habits have been changing as people's daily habits have been changing a lot over the last few months. That's right. That's right. Well, I think we've sort of come to the, the tail end of our, um, our discussion today, but um, where can we find you, Carmen? Where can our listeners find you? Um, well, they can find me personally on Twitter at Carlin at BookBub. Um, and then, of course, anywhere uh, where the BookBub Partners team is as well. Mm -hmm. So um, at BookBub Partners on Twitter, uh, keep an eye out for us on the blog as well. So that's insights.bookbub.com. Um, we're pu publishing articles there, of course, about BookBub, but Chirp and um, audiobook ads as well. So all of the information for our author partners is going to stay on that BookBub blog. And then, of course, you can always contact our team at partners at bookbub.com anytime uh, for questions about BookBub or Chirp. You're going to be working with the same team of people. Um, so we are always happy to answer any questions. That's brilliant. Thank you so much for being here. Um, and I would like to just put another little plug for the blog because I, I really enjoy it. I think there's a lot of great information there and it's always relevant, always current. So um, please do go and have a listen. And Shah, where can we be found? We can be found at spargirlspodcast.com. Um, we are also on Twitter and Facebook at Spar Girls Podcast. And look, thank you again, Carlin, for it's so lovely to see your beautiful face again. Um, and <laughs> I apologize for me zoning in and out. That's my internet connection currently. That's, that's but um, we will just make sure that all those links are in the show notes as well. So if you're listening to this as you're jogging um, or running, doing your exercise this morning, don't you worry. Just head over to spargirlspodcast.com and it's all there. Brilliant. Thank you very much for joining us and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.